Hi guys, in today's video we're just going to look at some uh, examples from Will Coxon and then I've written up myself for the ambiguities of notation and the interpretation of grace notes. And it's really two different concepts in a way, but they, they interrelate a little bit. Where, as a drummer, if you see something written down, uh, it can be like five or six different ways for exactly the same sound that the, the composer is going for. Um, and you can also see the same thing written down and interpret it you know, two, three, four different ways, uh, and not knowing which interpretation the composer was, was going for. We should be really careful about how we notate things, more careful than historically composers have been, um, in order that you actually get the sound you want uh, into the notation, rather than leaving it wide open. So um, it's not how it's always been done, but there are probably better and worse ways to do it, for drums at least. Anyway, check this out. Hopefully you find it interesting. Right here we have basically the standard notation for a roll on an eighth note in like the classical style. This does not necessarily mean uh, any type of number of strokes or anything. It's just a generally, it's a roll going from this eighth note tied to this eighth note. Um, so typically for drumming that means you'd start here and you'd sort of stop here. Um, and because they're tied, there's not really going to be any separation for that note. But that's pretty vague. You could put any number of strokes in there that you basically want. Um, another way to write that same figure is actually like this, where um, you just tie the notes together and you put this TR for trill and a little squiggly line, and that's like an old school European way of doing it. Um, and that's also super ambiguous. You just kind of have to catch that that's even there. If you were just reading the notation and weren't being super careful, you could actually miss that that was even a roll. Right? So I've got that here. If you put an accent on the end of it, um, okay, now you kind of see that like an accented note that's tied to, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless it's a roll. Um, but now we're getting closer to, to being a little less ambiguous. And again, you can do the accent with this notation as well. So these two little slash line things here um, obviously indicate that it's a roll. Um, they're essentially indicating 30 seconds, although the interpretation can be anything. It doesn't have to be 30 second notes. Uh, anyway, if you wanted a five stroke roll, you'd have to indicate on this notation that there were that it was a five stroke roll. And so someone reading along would have to see that it was a roll, that it's tied, oh but it's accident so it's not really tied, oh and it's a five stroke. It's a lot of information to, to take in to see that and then to apply the five stroke roll rudiment to it. Um, you can make it easier for drummers by, of course, putting the sticking in, but then that's just more information that you have to see. A different way of doing it that's a little less ambiguous is, of course, you could write it out in 30 second notes that you want uh, right, right, left, left, right, accent, uh, these four 30 seconds take up one eighth note, this eighth note uh, is the other eighth note in this, you know, normal pair that we would have. So that you still have to read that you want it to be, you know, double strokes instead of singles, um, but now the rhythm is unambiguous at least. Um, an even simpler way to write it might be this one, where you can actually take the slashy line thing from the roll um, and apply it into the double stroke situation, where you take the sixteenths and you put a third slash on to make thirty seconds. Now you only have to write one of the stickings because it's implied for drummers that this means a double stroke or a diddle and you still have that same accent on the end and from this there's a lot less information and you can still kind of see that it's a five stroke roll it's not the perfect system it's still you still have to see the slash and the accent and the sticking and the rhythm um, but it's maybe a little easier to read but essentially all of these so far have meant the same thing now the one more other way you could write it is this this is probably uh, it's pretty clear as far as how many notes you want, but it's very unclear as to how fast you want them to go. This is the first one that doesn't really indicate time. So you have this eighth note here, and because there's an eighth rest there, you know it's obviously on the and, accented, just like all these other ones were. But where these four notes are uh, is unclear. You're not sure if they start on this first beat or if they start after the first beat, which means the roll will actually end up being faster. It's, it's sort of ambiguous. Now, there are other ways to write it. You could write it like this where you put the ties in the five and you use the slashy things and then you kind of don't need the sticking anymore because a five stroke roll obviously you know what the sticking is going to be. Um, that's a pretty acceptable way to write it. Here's what I would consider another sort of unacceptable way to write it. Uh, the sticking here should be obvious but the fact that you're using like a drag into a diddle is, is pretty weird, right? But somehow like you could see this being written as a five stroke roll 
if you kind of really squint at it. But this is going to take even longer than some of these other ones to figure out because this is really non-standard. Nobody would, would do this. Um, this would be even less likely. I've never seen it written this way. I, I would never expect to see it written this way. But you can see uh, now it's diddle onto a drag and technically that could make a five stroke roll depending on your interpretation. But herein lies the problem. This one, this one, and this one up here uh, all rely on interpretation. Whereas even though all the rest of these are more or less easy to read um, or harder to read depending on your perspective, they're pretty unambiguous as to what they want except for you know maybe this guy. Um, but as soon as you start adding in these grace notes, it becomes very ambiguous. I'll show you what I mean. So here's a rhythm that looks on the surface to be you know a little bit difficult to perform, but if you're good at drums, not really. Um, right? It's a dotted 16th onto a drag for a 32nd, dotted 16th, drag on a 32nd. Um, so how is this performed though? That's where it becomes ambiguous. You can make these drags sort of any spacing that you want as long as it fits between the first and the second real note there, right? Which we know because of the dot, there are two 32nd notes in there. So these two notes could be both 32nd notes. They could be both 64th notes jammed onto the second of those two intermediate 32nd notes. Um, they could be the some version of a triplet that fits in the middle of there. Unclear, and especially if it's like the orchestral notation uh, versus rudimental, you know, it makes a big difference, right? So this figure here is actually what it could be in the sort of most wide open rudimental uh, interpretation of the same figure, right? If we play these grace notes as just regular 32nd notes, but a double stroke, you can get right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, and it's just a big block of 30 seconds. Every note is the same speed, it's just the sticking has changed, and that's all that these have done. Now on the other hand, you could, like I said, you could really condense it down to 64ths on the second of those intermediate 30 seconds, and then they get real, real tight. And of course, you could go full orchestral, and you could actually make it like a buzzed flam. Three distinct interpretations for the same figure, right, which was originally this. Hit, drag, hit, drag, right? Could be all the same hits, could be really compressed hits towards the second note, could be a, a buzzy flam, kind of an orchestral thing that really has no time at all. So, how do we know what to do? Well, that is the great mystery of drumming. How do you interpret those things? Well, the short answer is kind of however you want, or sort of contextually based on the situation. Uh, you know, the, it's an interpretation, obviously. But here we're looking at a solo from uh, the good old standby, Charlie Wilcoxon. This is out of All American Drummer, solo 112, obviously. Um, and in this solo, you have both drags, obviously in the rudimental interpretation, uh, where they're open. But how open is the question. Um, but also down here, you have an 11 stroke roll that incorporates a drag as the first two strokes. So uh, basically the way I see it, if you have a drag onto an 11 stroke roll um, and, and all the drag notes plus the, the clear roll here add up to 11, that means to me that you have to play these two notes the same speed you're going to play all of these other nine notes to make 11. Um, and that's going to dictate the drag spacing for other drags in the piece because once you've made an interpretation, at least I feel like you, you probably shouldn't uh, just arbitrarily change it um, mid-piece, right? Why would this drag be different from this drag? I, I don't see a good reason. You can argue with me in the comments if you want. But once you've seen that you're going to have to use it in a sort of very rhythmic context, making this role fit into this space, um, then that's going to dictate the drags for the other components of the piece, which makes this figure sort of like that one I showed you in the pencil. Wilcoxon drag figure version one, version two, version three. Uh, but again, consistently interpreting the thing makes that change. So 
Uh, these are the kinds of things that drummers need to think about. I don't know what the exact answer is. That's just what I do. You can do whatever you want, obviously. Again, that's why it's an interpretation. But that's just a good example of the way that uh, sort of this drag notation, the grace notes, um, is very, very confusing to some people and is, is maybe not the best way we should be notating things as drummers. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about rudiments, check out my book, Encyclopedia Rudimentia, from Hudson Music or Amazon.com. Uh, I'm going to put a link up in here somewhere um, about it. But uh, again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.